It's about a few days now to think about the CNN town hall. And I, it dawned on me today, I think, in terms of answering the question of what's the correct way? How should it have been done? I think I got an idea. So I think there are many issues with the CNN town hall, but in terms of strategically speaking, if I were CNN, now we're going to do that town hall. I don't know if I should say if I were CNN. <laughs> Let's say if my channel was at a level where I could entertain a, a town hall event like that, what would my event look like versus the one that CNN did? Um, first of all, I would look long and hard for the right person to do the event it needs to be someone that has the rhetorical skills to be able to handle someone like donald trump because he's the kind of person that needs to be handled right a lot of these politicians are bad in terms of dodging questions and all kinds of games but this is a guy that he just to some it's like an amazing skill about how great he is but to me in reality it's not that he's great it's a it's that he has no shame right the thing that holds back other politicians is even the ones that seem very shameless have more shame than he does right so there's a there's a limit to how ridiculous they want to be so that kind of constrains their tactics but if trump were a uh, uh, a um a fighter right professional fighter he's the one who's willing to throw sand in your face um hit you below the belt you know whatever it takes right maybe put something in his glove that and then put it over your face and then it makes you pass out or something um he doesn't care so even the other fighters being savages you know they'll do a lot of stuff a lot of unethical stuff but then it's kind of like sand in the face is a little bit too on the nose you know what i mean so that gives him an advantage. It's kind of like, imagine you're fighting with an opponent, right? And the opponent doesn't care about anything. They don't care about hitting civilians. They don't care about collateral damage. They don't even care about hitting their own people, right? They're just firing indiscriminately. Brrr, they use whatever explosions, they don't care. And then you have some level of ethics, even if you're willing to push the edge a little bit, but you got a little bit of ethics. So you see a bunch of civilians you pause, you hesitate. Is there a way that I can have a better shot and not hurt them? You're at a disadvantage, right? So even if you're the, the superior fighter, you're, dis you're at a disadvantage when you're fighting someone who's not following any rules whatsoever. Meanwhile, you're following some level of rules, right? That's the kind of way. So I gotta find someone that has the rhetorical skills to be able to handle someone like him, um, who, you know, will spend time analyzing how he does debates and how he communicates. Um, how he wiggles out of things and come up with tactics to basically um, not allow him to play games and escape you know the stuff that he does basically deflate all of his tactics put him in a situation where you ask him a question he has to answer the question right or at least it's not so easy for him to wiggle out of the answering the question and deflecting and changing topics and over talking you and stuff like that right so definitely a rhetorical champion is going to be the one i'm not the one to do a debate with donald trump um logically and factually speaking some people might think yeah i'd do great because i could expose all his lies but um i i that's not my that's not my skill set dealing with somebody like him who's going to gish gallop me with all kinds of, what about this and he's got the emotional connection with the audience nope so find someone who is appropriate that's something i mentioned before but a big thing that i thought about today was what are the topics of discussion right no no issue necessarily with the right person asking a lot of the questions that they did ask right you know what i mean um even if we kind of know the answers already, still give him a chance to say, you know, do you still believe the election was installed, whatever. You know, again, we know what he's going to say, but I think in fairness, this, in, this is the news, you know, it, 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 news gathering. Allow him to say it, right? Um, that should not be the focus, though. The, the previous stuff and what he did and, 
and and Eugene Carroll, whatever. Again, these are news, newsworthy topics to mention. Fine, but I think most of my town hall would consist about asking Trump about policy. Right? If he's running for president, we need to know what we're gonna get. Now, a lot of people say, "Well, we already know what you're gonna get." Fine, but if you're gonna have a town hall with him and he's running for president, right? The point should be to inform the voters, right? So inform the voters on what they're gonna get with him, right? So I would spend a lot of time looking at all the things that, you know, Republicans have been complaining about, right-wingers have been complaining about, right-wing influencers have been complaining about, all the fear-mongering about the country and how it's falling apart under Biden. I would get a full list of all these issues and then I would basically make him tell us what he's going to do um, better, how he's going to improve. So what are you going to do about inflation? What are you going to do about the Ukraine war? What are you going to do about abortion? What are you going to do about whatever the things are, right? Right now there's a problem with the jobs or this or that, the, the border issues, da 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 right? If you were president right now, what would you do about X? What would you do about, you know, Y? Because he's really a hype master and he's all about emotion so he just likes to say yeah i would shut this down in in you know one day or something but then when you ask him how he would do it you're not going to get much details right because he's a bullshit artist so i think that's the way to really handle somebody like him and do a proper job because you know you're asking him about what he's going to do how he's going to deliver on, on on certain things how he's going to improve the lives of the of the people right the valid questions is important things to know that's important information for a voter to know and if he's unable to give you details about how he's going to improve these things, then I think I think that's a clear showing that he is uh, basically a fraud, right? That is, to me, the best potential chance that you have of really um, delivering the goods in a, a Trump town hall. Basically put him in a position of explaining in detail because I think if you keep doing that, he's not going to have a lot of answers. And then you can keep exposing that, right? And this is not like a setup or whatever. This is legit. If you're a president and you're talking about inflation, inflation, and then when you're asked about how you're going to prove it and you don't have anything to say, you want to be like, oh, this, just the Democrats or whatever. whatever. Like, if that's all you got, um, obviously there's a percentage of people that are unreachable. But for the people who are reachable, who just... You know, yeah, Trump is problematic, but he's better than the Democrats because of X, Y, and Z or whatever. Um, these people realizing that just about every, you know, question of substance that you ask in terms of policy and what he would do, he didn't really seem to have good answers. And when he's pressed on them, like he's just kind of wiggling around. I mean, it'd be to me, it would be easy to see because, you know, when you're asking him about stuff in the past, he's had a lot of time to come up with answers. And he can just this and that and that and, that and she lied or whatever, right? But it's much harder. This is one of the reasons why a lot of these politicians like to play with culture war stuff because that stuff is easy, right? What's hard is solving problems, having a detailed plan about how you're going to solve problems. Ask a Republican what they want to do about all these mass shootings, right? That's a horrible question to ask them, right? Because it's a complicated issue. And to resolve it requires complex ideas. And that's not something that, that they really have to offer, right? They'd rather just talk about fear-mongering, about taking away the guns. So if you push them on, like, what's the policy, what's the policy, then you'll get these vague, like, well, you know, blah, 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 right? And that's how you can really expo expose them, you know, for the frauds that they are. So to me, that's the way to go. Ask him legitimate questions. What would you do better? And I know he's not going to have a lot of good answers. He's going to just like try to dodge. But you got to pin him down. Pin him down. Um, you can even, and this is something somebody with good rhetorical skills would have, know, anticipate that he's going to try to dodge all these questions and try to give vague answers and, and give every excuse why he can't detail what his plan is. Oh, I don't want people to know because then Biden will just take it and do my plan or whatever it is, right? Have a, a, a set uh, way to address the games that he's going to play when he cannot detail how he's going to improve the lives of Americans, right? And do it in a way where it's not that you're setting him up or you're doing anything dishonest. You're just allowing him to basically expose himself, right? 
do you or do you not have a solid comprehensive plan about how to deal with X and Y and Z? What is the reason that you're unable to detail this plan? And then again, I already have, you know, he's already have a response to all of his excuses. Um, I would even set up like in the beginning, you know, basically in anticipation of these answers, say, you know, a candidate who has great ideas and who can lead this country in terms of being better will have plans that will allow them to do these things, right? A person who doesn't have specific plans, detailed plans, cannot be taken seriously. Now, someone who likes to say stuff and there's nothing really behind it, when pressed, they are going to say things like this, and I can't say because of that. Uh, like, basically um, deflate all of the excuses before he even says them. So when he tries to give those excuses, it's like, well, you're doing exactly, maybe make a contract with him. Please, when I ask, I'm gonna ask you about some policies, I wanna hear your ideas, and I'm gonna ask that you please actually answer the questions. Um, you can't, every single question, just say somehow it's a secret or, or something, or you know, whatever the potential rebuttals. Um, because, that's going to give the appearance that you actually aren't serious and you don't actually have a plan, right? So if you really do have good plans, now is the time to let people know what those plans are. So when they, you know, when election time comes, they know what they're getting, right? That's our goal here is to inform the voters so they know what they're getting. Um, so if you have great plans and they like your plans and they'll vote for you, you win, right? Potentially. Um, if you don't have good plans, however, then at least they'll know that so they can vote accordingly, right? Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts. Tell me what your thoughts are. You think that's the way to do it. Um, so rhetorical king, to be able to handle him, you know, and that kind of person would, would, would do really good preparation and be ready, rebuttals, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then finally focus on policy. What will you do to fix X? What will you do to fix Y? And don't allow him to wiggle his way out and say vague stuff. Detail it. What do you mean by that? But how will you do that? But who's going to do that with you? Like, get into the details, right? Because he's a guy who likes to live on emotion. And, yeah, America did it. Right? If you pin him down with the details, that is where he exposes himself. And that's the way I would do a town hall with Trump and, frankly, anybody. Um, the main thing, difference with him is the rhetorical stuff. Um, if it was somebody like Joe Biden, I I would like to think that I could handle a Joe Biden. Um, and that's not because Joe Biden is like, you know, this ridiculous idea that he's so much older than Trump and he's so much, you know, less. Uh, it's just, that's not his thing, man. Trump is a, is a reality TV star. Um, he's a, a master manipulator. He's really good with playing with people's emotions and, you know, wiggling out of stuff. Um, that's what he does, right? It's kind of like me trying to outsmart a professional scam artist, right? That knows all the rebuttals and all the tricks and knows all the kind of psychological things. Um, you know what I mean? If they're really, really good, then, you know, it's going to be a little bit challenging for me. But, but Joe Biden is, to me, um, I think a much easier target to, to, uh, to, to handle, and with the same format, what are you going to do to make, make the country better? And I know he's going to say a lot of stuff. And my thing is, well, you said this before and you didn't deliver. Why would we be going to deliver it this time? Right? Anyway, let me know your thoughts below. This is the Baby Channel, the Baby Comment section below. Click on the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, be well.